Hi everybody and welcome back. It's good to see you and importantly it's good to be seen. So today I'm on the hunt for Willow because Willow is a good place to start if we're going to make some cordage. Okay we could use nettles and other materials out there but today we are starting with Willow and they do say that cordage binds bushcraft together. I mean, I didn't say that, but you may have heard similar. So, we're going to go off in search of some. I know there's some up this way. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say, if you like the show, like and subscribe. And uh, please leave a comment. Hey, what have we got here? Huh? This is a good find. Not much of it here, but this is actually wild garlic or ramson as we call it. And if you break the leaf like that and smell it, wow, that's really um, got a strong smell of garlic. Every part of this plant is edible. It's fantastic. It's got a lovely taste. Hmm, very nice. I mean, you can add these to soups or salads. Just makes a wild addition to your pot. Yeah, very nice. Lucky find. Okay, so right, I found my willow, and this is um, a very resourceful material in bushcraft. It, it grows pretty much, not everywhere, but damp conditions. As you can see here in this woodland, there is a lot of it. There's full-sized willow trees in here and there's also these ones that come down. And what's really good about them is that when they come down like this, the shoots come out of them and they grow long and straight. So that's why they're really good for bow drills. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this one off because it's almost wrist thickness. And I won't waste it. What I do is, I'll, what I don't use is I'll put somewhere and let it season and then come back, maybe use it for a bow drill or something else. Maybe a carving project. So my next job is just to cut it up into usable lengths. Um, I'm probably going to make it um, probably arm length. Um, and that's just sort of more manageable size really. So that's a pretty good start. So I'm gonna, I don't want any knots in it like this. So I'll cut it there and turn this into sections. This is a nice bit for, a, for cordage. But I'm going to take this bit here. And I'm going to put this somewhere so it can season and we can come back and use that later. So, in order for us to turn this willow into um, cordage we first must scrape off this outer bark with the back of our knives. Now the best way to do this is literally just hold the top with one hand and then literally just start scraping down with the other like that and all we want to do is remove just the green stuff that you can see there. So all the way down don't go too mad because if you go too hard then you'll start pushing into the uh, the inner Cambrian layer because that's the layer that we want and use to turn into a cordage.
Okay, so what do I do then? So what I do now is I normally get, being careful here, get the back of your knife and lay it on the wood itself and start to split and cut the Cambrian layer right down the middle there like that, like so. All the way till you get to the bottom, like so. Right, and then we just literally carefully peel this Cambrian layer back, being careful not to be too rough with it. And once you've got it to that point, it's just a matter of peeling it off, like so. Okay, and there it is, you've got your white stick. And then this is what we're going to turn into our cordage. So, I will crack on with the other one. And after that, we're going to light a fire, which I'm going to move from here. I'm going to move to my other little spot. And then... We want to do is keep these, this outer bits that we scraped off, we're going to use that on a fire, which we're going to start in a second. We're going to mix that with some charcoal, and that's going to make a, like a type of lye solution, which will help our um, cordage here from uh, getting any, um, well, it keeps it very pliable, and it also st stops it getting sort of funguses attacking it or mildew attacking it, obviously, because we live in a damp country. This will help that do that. So I'm going to crack on and do the other one and light a fire, and I will see you shortly. OK, so we've got our three bits of material here that we're going to turn into cordage. But what you could do if you wanted to um, build um, or make something else, like a basket or a sheath or anything else, you'd cut them to the required thicknesses that you, um, that you, that you need. But because I'm making cordage, I'm going to just cut mine at a, a sort of a, a normal level. But what I normally do is I literally just stick my knife in there. There's, some, there's a normal split in the wood there. I'm just going to put that in there like so. And what you can do is some people put a little block in there. Then they can measure exactly um, the length of or the thickness of their strip that they wanted. If they want to keep it consistent. But what I normally do is uh, I normally do it, just literally feed it through like this. Yeah, and you can just, you can turn it and just pull it through that way there. Yeah, and you just turn it, it, if it goes thick, turn it the other way, if it goes thin, turn it one way. See that it's gone thick, so you just come across. Okay, so there you have, you have one bit there. Okay, and you again, you know, the thickness is, is whatever you require. You could even pull it apart if you wanted to, like so. But I find that's a little bit, as you can see, it's gone a bit sort of thin to thick. So what you'd have to do, obviously, you'd have to, if you're doing it by hand, you'd have to carefully do it this way. It doesn't matter too much, because we can work with it anyway. Okay, so that's a couple of good bits there. Just mind your fingers. Okay, what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to wrap these up like so, because we need to put them in our pot. What we do is we leave some out, so we'll have. A, you can see what happens to them when they're not put in the solution. So we'll just put that in there like so. Because they're very 
wet still they're very flexible so we'll just put that in there that'd be one we'll put all these together we'll leave to say we'll leave some out we'll leave that one out we'll leave those two out put these in together these are the big thicker strips what wider they are put them in there okay just to let you know when you start doing this with your knife you get this almost like this residues on there it goes purple it doesn't actually affect the knife but um yeah it makes pretty much of a mess but i'm going to clean it off shortly so what we need to do now is we need to add some ash from our fire into our water okay Right, so we've got the ash in there. We just want to put this outer bark in there. It's more of a, um, this is like, it dyes it a little bit. As you can see, it goes purple. So it's obviously going to discolor or color our, um, our cordage. This also stops it from going sort of moldy too. Um, like if you've got it out in, out in door environments a lot, if it gets mildew on it, this will protect it from rotting out a lot quicker than if you don't do it. And uh, there's a lot of tannins in, obviously in there as well from the bark so we put that about that in there hey look we've got a stick to mix that up with don't want the leaves in there though okay just mix that up okay so what we do is we just stick these in there Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit more water in there and then what we're going to do now is just stick it on the fire Well, I'll put that on the fire first. It's going to put it there. We're going to let it boil away What I do is I'll just I just top that up I'll just fill that up And all we got to do now is let it boil for sort of you can boil it for an hour You can boil it 20 minutes half an hour the, Obviously the longer you keep it on there the more that the uh, cordage will penetrate the cellulite solution um, but we'll just give it half an hour or so and then we'll, we'll take it off and we'll dry it and then we'll use it so we'll just let the fire do its thing and build the fire up sort of purple water but it's really nice this is obviously our bits and bobs in there what we got but there's the cordage look it's turning a sort of a purple but the longer you leave it in there obviously the the darker or the more purpley type color it's gonna 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 be so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get that off the fire and then um, we're gonna get it out and give it a wash and then hang it up to dry so what I want to do seeing that I haven't got my gloves Tip it over, obviously.
Okay, that's pretty cool. Right then, so what we do is we just give them a quick rinse in the stream and then we hang them up. The only reason I'm doing this is because obviously you add the charcoal in there and it's a little bit gritty and I don't want my cordage to be gritty when it dries. So I'm just giving it a quick rinse and it isn't gonna, it's not a poisonous solution. So it's not gonna harm any other wildlife. It's only a quick rinse. Okay, done. Okay, just a quick air dry. do it okay what I've done is I've just knocked up this was our pot holder I've just knocked up another V stick there and I'm just gonna hang these over I'm just gonna let it dry or dryish Because the fire is dying down now, I'm just going to spread it out and hopefully some of the hot embers will just add a little bit of heat to help dry it out. Though this is not necessary, I just want to cool down the fire before I clean up. We're starting to dry our cordage and just for a note that it's better to let it dry before you start using it because it it will dry once it dries down and shrinks if you re-wet it which you'll have to do if you're going to re rework it, obviously it won't shrink down as much again so it's always better to let's let this shrink down and then let's say re-wet it and then that will stop the shrinkage when you actually make your cordage or um anything else any other little projects that you want so as you can see the different colors here look between the original one which we didn't add and the one which has actually got our um lye solution and what's really also worth pointing out but this is more flexible and pliable than this one is so it's had a sort of bit more maybe a bit more durability a bit more uh, usability to it well that's sort of going to dry and crack and that has shrink down quite a lot so Okay, so to make cordage from our willow bark, just to start off with, I'm gonna stagger that, because you don't want it dead in the middle like that. So when you add in, because it's staggered, it just makes the uh, cordage a little bit stronger. So what do I do is what I normally just start twisting this. I've got the cordage or the uh, willow bark caught in these fingers here, and all I'm doing is, is stopping that twisting, but I'm starting to twist away from myself like so right i don't want to twist all the way up though i don't think it matters too much and what you do is you twist it to the point where it wants to sort of kink like that on its own see how it does that so i'll stop that twisting there and as you force it together in the middle there it just kinks like so and what you want to do is grab that bit in the middle there and all i do is I think you, it doesn't matter what way you twist it towards you or twist it away from you. I've never really, I've only done it ever one way. So what I normally do, see as it's like that now, see it's a little bit wet, it just sort of stays there. So, so what we do is we start from the beginning. So hold it in your hand like that. Get these two bits there, twist it. So it forms a kink like so. And what I normally do is I grab the kinked bit in my fingers like so so we're like that yep so we've got a top one and now we've got a bottom one and all i do is i twist away right and then what i do is i pass that twist and twist it clamp it and then with my middle finger i will grab the one on the bottom 
and I will pass it underneath and the top one over the top. So I'm twisting it like that, right? And then I move my fingers up slightly to grip onto that because I don't want it coming undone. And then I twist it away from myself. Okay, again, I'm grabbing this underneath one on the bottom, pulling it under while twisting the other one over. A bit like a corkscrew, really. Twist it away. Okay, that's quite tight anyway. Same again, twist it like that. Right, and all the while I'm, I'm edging, edging this finger and thumb along as I'm twisting it. So twist, right over the top, twist it like that. See, all that's happening is when you've twisted it, this is going over, that's coming under. It's just, it's just swapping places, that's all. So you twist like that, twist it round like that. And what you do, as you get quicker at doing this, it starts to become second nature and you, you're not even thinking about it. So it's twist away, swap, because you only twist the top one. So you twist, swap it round, top, twist the top one, swap around. Right, and as you can see, while we've been talking and explaining how it's done, that is turning into some cordage. It's quite nice, it's quite neat. See how all the lines are universal, um, symmetrical, universal, blah, 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 whatever. And then all I do is I carry on, but what you gotta do, the thickness either side has gotta be roughly the same, because if it's not, then it's not gonna look very good. Though in an emergency, it won't really matter. So I'm just gonna quickly go to the end and I'll show you how to join in. This is still quite wet. There's a good chance that when this shrinks down, it's probably gonna go quite loose. So that's why it's a good idea to get this completely dry. But like I said, in an emergency, in an emergency situation, we won't have that option. We just gotta use it straight away. I.e. if you needed to make some cordage because your rucksack strap broke. Or, or whatever, your laces are broke or whatever. So you'll have to use it wet. Okay, what I'm doing now then, I'm getting to the end of one and I've got a long bit on the other one. Well, what I need, to, as you can see, this is sort of gone from thick and it's going down to thin. That's not too bad, I can use that. So, okay, so this is what we got so far. Okay. Right, and I'll show you how I join in normally. Right, I take another piece, roughly the same thickness. Okay, you can do this two ways. You can either use a knife or you can use your fingernails. And all I do is I break a bit off like so, down to nothing almost. You can do this with a knife. Pick the best side. It looks quite tough. I'm going to go down too far. Okay, and what I normally do with this is that you've got to join these together. And what you normally do is if you taper that down and then you taper that down. I'm just doing this roughly so you can sort of get the idea. Right, so that's, I'm gonna take a bit of that off there, just a little bit. Okay, and what you do is, by laying them together, roughly, you should have the same thickness as that laid together. So if I lay that together, that's roughly the same thickness, M2 to that one. Then all I do is I start twisting these together away from myself. Yep, like that, like so. Some people, well, I'll tell you what some people do, they just have a bit sticking out the top like that and then they burn that bit off later. But I'm not too worried about that. So all I'm going to do is start twisting it away together, like so. Get to where I am. What you do is you just carry on. I 
and then you've got to go right through because obviously these two bits are twined together so technically speaking they should be as one as you go up and I know my fingers are covering over everything and it's hard to see but it's almost like they're little clamps see how those two are together look see we're coming to the end now so twist away see as we swap round Fing middle finger grabs the bottom one twists it around so this is twisting if I'm looking at it that's twisting I guess that's anti-clockwise and that there is clockwise anti-clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise and so on sometimes people have difficulty in doing this because they can't always see what's going on let me just go a bit more and if you sit around the fire in the evening or just sitting around or you're I don't know just chilling out in a hammock or whatever in your tent by the fire you can just literally do miles of this stuff not literally but okay so okay so that if you can see along there that's roughly is a little bit of a bulge here there's a little bit ununiform there but that's probably just where the um the cord thickness has changed but you you get the idea okay and then you just start and if you wanted to like i do when i'm making cordage i'll just start reeling it around like so i mean this bit here See, so soon again, look, I'll have to start adding in. Right, this is an interesting concept. If you see here, you've got almost a big gap there. It's not universal, um, uniformed like that bit there. That normally means it's just come out a little bit thicker. This one here is obviously just a wee bit thicker than this one. So it's not twisting um, the same. So all you do is you just add in another bit now. You can cut that bit short and just add in, and hopefully that will turn back. But like I said, just for um, just for quick cordage, that'll suffice. That's pretty flexible. And when that, I mean, that's like a pair of laces almost. Fishing line, shelters, and obviously the thicker the material, the thicker your rope's going to be. Well, let's just put that there a sec, and we we'll try one of these really thick ones. Let's try a real well, not the thickest, but a fairly thick one. There we go. Let's see how this one turns out. So I'm just going to stagger it, okay, and you'll start, sort of see how it all starts again. So what we do, okay, same thing applies. This is your left, I'm right-handed, so my left hand is going to be my clamp hand. Okay, I want to stagger it, like so. Okay, I'm going to go there. So what I'm doing is I'm literally clamping that there. I'm twisting it away from myself. Okay, so that's clockwise. Keep going. Okay, I'm just going to twist a bit more here because it's just a little bit thick. Okay, so what you do is, once she starts twisting big time, see how that goes? It wants to go. Okay, and then now we've got a, a twisted kink bit. That is the end of our rope. Okay, then that goes into my clamp hand, like so. Okay, so then I just start twisting it away. Okay, then this thing starts again. So you twist it away, or clockwise, then go anti-clockwise clockwise and clockwise and this is quite thick and if it dries too much while you're doing this you can always re-wet it Okay, so now I've got to really start thinking about joining in. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I'll join in. I'll go and get my knife and then we'll join a bit in, because that's a little bit thicker, I want to be a bit more precise. So what I do is I'll go and get my knife and we'll cut, we'll cut it in and I'll show you how to do it with a knife. Right, so this is the way to join in 
when it's quite thick like this, what I normally do is that you want to taper it in. Um, I don't suppose it really matters what way it goes. I never really thought about it. So what you want to do is you've got to cut it from one corner all the way through to sort of about there. So all I normally do is just lay my knife, lay that flat like that, roughly. Get it about there. And just sort of cut it. Like so. Okay, and what you gotta do is get your piece that's roughly the same thickness, like so. And all I do, if you wanna make it precise, you can just take the bit you've cut off lay it on the top there and use that as a template to get exactly the same thickness like so see so now that in theory should be exactly the same so when i lay that on there like so as you can see it's going to be the same thickness yeah Okay, so I'm just going to put my knife away, just in case I'll put my hand on it. Okay, same as the other one. So we lay them together, making sure that they're, like this one goes that way, that one goes that way. It doesn't really matter too much, they're going to twist up anyway. And then you just twist them together. Okay, don't forget to twist it away from yourself. Okay, make sure it's twisted, make sure they're together. And all we do is carefully twist them around. Because it's a lot thicker, it's a little bit harder, but it's nice to use thick materials. If you've got any questions about this, obviously just uh, drop us a message and then uh, I'll get back to you. But don't be frustrated with it. It is not that hard to do. I mean, most of the bushcraft skills that I'm showing you are quite straightforward. The complicated ones come later. Start easy and work up. Okay, so there we go, it's in there. Right, I'll just give it a couple more turns. And you can see that that is very uniform there, look. See, it's pretty good. And these bits here that dry off, you can just get a lighter and burn along there. But this is still quite wet, but I just wanted to show you, obviously, how the, the process is. And all you do is you just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding. And obviously now, soon, I'm going to be ready for another one. But the the thing is the joins aren't together so when i pull on that they're not going to come apart and that's quite strong and i'll say as you do it you curl it round and then you start to get rope so from that to that is pretty cool okay this will shrink and that's why i say because it's wet it's better to let it shrink when it dries <coughs> excuse me and then re-wet it and then when it dries again it won't shrink so much well, that's pretty cool. And that's how there is to it, really. I'll just do a little bit more. Right, so there you have it. That is cordage from Willow. So we went from cutting the, uh, the actual uh, wood itself, you know, cutting the, the branch down, and then we went to obviously processing it, cutting it off, straight, scraping the outer bark off, obviously keeping the outer bark as a part of our lye solution. And then we cut it into strips, 
we stick it in a little pot with some water with some charcoal obviously and then we stuck it on the fire for about half an hour 45 minutes obviously we took it off washed it and then obviously we got a like a little drying rack that we set up um, ideally you want to sort of dry it really and this is sort of getting dry but it's not quite there yet because obviously about the shrinkage that is really important and I can't emphasize that enough it will shrink down big time so don't forget it shrinks the most the first time after that it, it's not really a problem so this is two sizes that we looked at I say that's more sort of finer maybe fishing line and this is maybe some cordage to maybe um, fix a rucksack or um, some shelter building maybe um, but you know it's like um, paracord it's got many uses or even the bow drill that would probably make a good really good bow drill string because it's quite thick and that is quite believe it or not that is quite strong now so that's pretty good so with that said then wait well, look you could put that in the end there anyway i won't do that anyway so with that said you can um Go off and try and learn some of this because this is um, quite an important skill again you know like if your life depended on it and you needed to snare some food you know you know how to make some cordage to do that with so get out there do some bushcraft leave a message if you haven't subscribed already that i'd really appreciate it and um i mean i hate people that sort of plug but um just to let you know um, i'm not saying anything Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I don't like plugging myself, but um, yeah, so that's it, guys. <laughs> okay, just for fun. Okay, then, so take care of yourself, and I will catch you on the next one. Okay, I'm just going to finish some of this off.